Living in Chicago, one can find many neighborhoods that contain murals influenced by the Mexican muralist movement. It reminds us that past influences are present in much of today's art, especially in the near south side neighborhood of Pilsen. It was the Mexicans that actually influenced American art. The Mexican muralist movement broke barriers by communicating political, social, and economic struggles of the common people using imagery and symbolism. When you talk about the Mexican muralist movement, you refer to Los Tres Grandes, or the Big Three, consisting of Diego Rivera, David Alfaro Siqueiros, and Jose Clemente Orozco. Los Tres Grandes and the Mexican muralist movement originated during the Mexican Renaissance period from 1903 to 1945. At the time, Alvaro Obregón was president of Mexico and represented the center-left political party, which combined democratic socialism with trade unionism. Los Tres Grandes went to the same school, were the same political party, and broke barriers when their movement inspired governments to establish federally funded programs, allowing them and others to paint ideals of the time, preserving history throughout America. So those murals of the revolutionary period help educate the masses because most of the Mexicans were illiterate, they didn't know how to read. They met each other early in their careers. In 1911, David met Jose at a student strike. In 1919, David met Diego while in Paris studying art. Later, all three met through David. While Mexican muralism flourished, the United States was experiencing the Great Depression and the Red Scare, a period of great fear that communism would take over America. This made a great impact on the artist's subject matter. The only healthy movement in, a, in the 20s, in the 30, in the 30 and until today is our movement. Just because we, uh, he become to be an art for the people and not for the masses. Their common theme was the social economic difference of the time. The rich were put as the focus in their murals, the center of attention, while the poor and the working class were always depicted as sad and grim. I used to say that between the easel painting and the mural painting is more or less the same that in technique, what we can say photography and cinematography. David Alfaro Siqueiros was born on December 29, 1896 in Chihuahua, Mexico. In 1910, the Mexican Revolution started, which influenced his political viewpoints. In 1911, his interest in architecture and passion for design led him to pursue a career in art at the San Carlos Academy of Fine Arts in Mexico City. He became interested in ancient American art, cubism, realism, and surrealism. He merged his social and political themes together. By 1913, he joined the Mexican Revolution Army, co-founding a group called the Congress of Soldier Artists and worked with Diego Rivera to start El Machete, a weekly paper for the country's Communist Party. David returned from the revolution with a soldier's view on war. He negatively depicted the repercussions of war and a fear of technological advancements. In 1919, he moved to Paris on a government scholarship for art because of his Congress of Soldier Artists membership. He returned to Mexico. From 1922 to 1924, he was commissioned to create murals in the Escuela Nacional Preparatoria and the former chapel of the University of Guadalajara in Jalisco. In 1932, David was exiled from Mexico because of his political activities and moved to Los Angeles so he could continue painting. While in LA, David created Tropical America at the Plaza Art Center in Italian Hall. It was a response to the thousands of Mexican people who were being put into train cars and deported back to Mexico. The center of the mural is a drawing of a Mexican tied to a cross underneath the American Eagle. Even though David continued to be exiled, imprisoned, and banned from other countries throughout the rest of his life due to his political activities, he never stopped painting. Uh, I have been in jail, I can say, each 10 days, in each 10 years. Later in life, his passion for both art and architecture were immortalized in his work at the Poliform Cultural Siqueiros at the World Trade Center in Mexico. In 1977, he was the architect for the building and artist for the murals outside and inside. He broke another barrier by making his building art. I used to have a workshop in New York. At the time, uh, uh, Stuart Davis and Jackson Pollock and uh, Gorkin and uh, Arenal and uh, many others, Americans, Argentines, Mexicans, work in my workshop. These American artists later incorporated Mexican muralism concepts into their own art to communicate their own social and political struggles.
Jose Clemente Orozco was born on November 23, 1883 in Ciudad Guzman. Like the other big three, he studied at the Academy of San Carlos. In 1904, Jose lost his hand while making fireworks to sell on Mexican Independence Day. Nevertheless, he continued to paint. In 1922, he started painting murals for the government of Mexico's illiteracy campaign. The most notable murals in Mexico are Man of Fire and Father Hidalgo. Meanwhile, in 1913, he was the first of the big three to be commissioned to work in America. His first mural, Prometheus, is at Pomona College in California. The mural represents the spark of knowledge. Prometheus appears to represent the college giving knowledge to the anticipating students below, which is one of the few universal theme murals that Jose created that did not involve any political topics. One of his largest educational commissions in the U.S. is housed at Dartmouth. In 1934, he created the Epic of American Civilizations, which took up a whole room in Dartmouth. This mural takes up 3,200 square feet of wall space with 24 distinct panels. The panels all represent important milestones starting from when the Aztecs came to America to modern industrialization in 1934. Jose's last mural was Allegory of the Nation, created in 1948 at Mexico's National Teachers College. His work has inspired many other famous artists such as Philip Gustin, Ben Shawn, and Jacob Lawrence. His art broke barriers by helping people realize that art is not just a subject or an action, but a form of communication. Diego Rivera was considered the most famous of Los Tres Grandes. He was born on December 8, 1886 in Guanajuato, Mexico. David became a full-time student at the Academy of San Carlos in 1898, but was expelled in 1902 for leading a student protest. From 1911 to 1920, Diego moved to Paris to study different art techniques, including Cubism, Realism, and Italian frescoes. He was influenced by Picasso, Brock, and Cezanne. In 1921, Diego moved back to Mexico and received funding by the Mexican government to create several murals for the National Preparatory School at the Ministry of Education. The first mural to be completed was Creation in 1922. From 1923 to 1924, Diego created Entry into the Mine and the Burning of the Judases. His most well-known mural, Dream of a Sunday Afternoon in Alameda Park, was painted in 1932 at the historic center of Mexico City. That same year, Diego was commissioned by the Rockefeller family to create his most infamous mural at Rockefeller Center in New York titled Man at the Crossroads. The Rockefellers weren't pleased with his political themes, so they tore it down. Eventually, Diego recreated this mural in 1941 back in Mexico at the Palacio de Bellas Artes. The smaller recreation of Man at the Crossroads used more vibrant colors and had a few alterations with additional symbolism added. In 1933, Diego painted the Detroit Industry murals, which caused huge controversy. For example, there were workers of all races together, a baby being vaccinated, and some nudes representing fertility. Many people wanted the murals to be destroyed because they were vulgar and un-American. They weren't destroyed because the commissioner wanted the murals to stay, so he held his decision. By 1940, Diego was invited to participate at the Golden Gate International Exposition on Treasure Island. This World Fair highlighted the new bridges built in San Francisco. He painted Pan American Unity to show that Mexico culture is also part of the United States, breaking the barriers between both countries. During his life, Diego had studios both in Mexico City and San Francisco. Diego shared them with his third wife, the famous artist Frida Kahlo. Diego influenced many people, including Frida Kahlo, Juana Gorman, and Ben Shahn. The Mexican muralist movement promoted communication, unity, and national identity. It allows people to understand and share ideas. This art form has been adopted by artists to educate and give a voice without using a single word. Cities with a large Latino population, such as Chicago, have started mural programs and grants to create a sense of identity. Pilsen has many famous muralists, such as Marcos Raya and Hector Duarte. Both artists have worked at David Alfaro Siqueiros' workshop, influencing their art in different ways. If you, if you are a person who really loves art the way I did or do, it's, nothing is going to stop you. Murals are often referred to as walls with tongues, and we cannot agree more. There used to be a barrier between the political and art world since the two cannot be more different. When the Mexican muralist movement began, it broke a barrier that is now a bridge.